Hey, are you a lesbian or queer woman who's thinking about using online dating apps? Or just curious about what's out there and what to expect? Well, I got you covered. So for me, myself, um, I've been using dating apps for about eight years now. Um, so it feels like a really long time. So I definitely want to share with you what I've found and noticed in my trials and tribulations of using um, some of the various dating apps that are available. Personally, I think it's very helpful to use dating apps when it comes to being a queer woman compared to other like heterosexuals where it's very easy to, to go and just run into somebody in the supermarket or like in the library, wherever. And everybody, pretty much most of the people on this planet are, would say, heterosexual. So it's, it's a heteronormative society. So that's why I found that dating apps have been really really beneficial and helpful because it takes away that first barrier. So the first and the most famous and notorious dating app I'm gonna talk about is Tinder. Uh, so Tinder's mo famous and known for its swipe left and swipe right aspect to it, making dating really convenient, but also to a fault. The fault is that you're really only presented with pictures. Because it's just pictures that you're seeing, especially just the first photo, it's very superficial. Um, if you're somebody who is looking for a long-term relationship, I would hope that you're somebody who's going to look beyond just pictures because as we've seen, Instagram can and, and other filters can really distort um, our perception of somebody. One of the biggest cons to Tinder is that it's very superficial. So if you're somebody who I guess isn't great at taking photos of themselves, it's gonna be hard to get a match because people are just gonna be looking at that one photo of you or several of photos of you if they go any further than that. There is a game to it. There is a strategy to it, unfortunately. So Tinder has like the bio section, but do many people read it? I, I don't know, but I personally do <laughs> because I do want to know what else is beyond that first image or those other images. I want to know who that person is, what they like, what they do. I actually read it. So because it is very superficial and it's just based on photos, it has such a heavy hookup culture. So uh, again, if you're somebody who's looking for a long-term relationship, Tinder is just definitely a different playground for 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 something like if it's for something like that if you're looking for that yeah just being a queer woman on tinder there's also a lot of profiles of threesomes that are on there definitely not looking for that okay <laughs> and then also there are other people other women who are on tinder looking for friends i i i don't understand <laughs> i don't understand it if you're looking for friends I would not go on Tinder, okay? People are trying to hook up. If you're looking for friends, that's more like PG rated. You wanna go somewhere else. Um, there are other apps for that. One of the biggest pros I would say to using Tinder, however, is it's got a large user base. It, unfortunately, quantity, I would say, matters in this sort of dating app um, strategy because a lot of the times like people match and I'm talking about all sorts of apps. People will match and then they just don't respond to you. So to, in order for you to get a higher chance of getting a date with somebody, having a higher quantity of matches or opportunities can get you that. So being gay, it's really difficult in that our dating pool is small already. Being on Tinder where there is a larger dating pool because of just a large, not large, not large dating pool, but just a, more people on that um, dating app, it gives you a better chance. And that's what I've noticed. On to Bumble. Bumble was created in intention to give a the woman in a heterosexual relationship um, more control for power, I guess, to avoid harassment because we commonly talk about, or like women commonly complain about being harassed by men online. Let me read this to you. So Bumble, how Bumble works. When members of the opposite sex match on Bumble, women are required to make the first move. 
shifting old fashioned power dynamics and encouraging equality from the start. When you look at this, when you read what Bumble is about, it was made and intended to be um, for the purpose of women in a heterosexual relationship. Many of you know that Bumble works in that the girls, the the, the woman makes the first move and the guy can't respond until until after that. So in, in a in a situation where there's two girls that are talking, like, okay, so who who goes first? Both of them have to respond in a 24 hour period in order to unlock the conversation so it doesn't disappear or expire. So the con, the con, the complaint that I have for this is that I hate that there's a time limit to it for both parties, okay? Because again, in this digital age, because ghosting and ghosting is a thing, ghosting happens, and or just people just don't respond to the message fast enough, I think it's a huge disadvantage to put a time limit on, on something, especially when it involves two people to unlock it in the 24 hour period. So I could, I could definitely respond to or message a girl in that 24 hour period. Now, I'm the one girl, okay? But the other girl who doesn't respond in that 24 hour period, well, guess what? Bye bye. That conversation is gone. And, and my expectations and hopes and dreams are down the drain. I personally do not like the, the setup when it comes to dating between two women on Bumble. Mm -mm. The benefit of the pros, I would say, just to be nice <laughs> about on Bumble is that, yes, the, like it does, it still has a swipe left and swipe right component to it, similar to Tinder. I feel like the culture behind it is a little bit more or a little less of the hookup culture. So there's that. But beyond that, I don't, they're dead <laughs> to each their own. All right, so the next one I'm talking about is Hinge. Hinge, I don't know if it's talked about too much about what this app is or if people are familiar with this app. It's, it's for everybody. What I do like about this app um, is that it definitely has a less of a hookup culture. Um, it's less superficial. It's got these little um, prompts that they give you and you can change the prompts. These prompts will be like, um, so bring up my profile because I'm so interesting. <laughs> my greatest strength, taking Halloween seriously. Ask me about my past costumes. But I like these prompts a lot because it tells you more about that person beyond just a picture. It gives you a taste of their personality based on what they answer and how they answer it. I really like that because, again, it's not superficial um, and it gives people a chance to express their personality because if you're looking for something beyond just a hookup, personality is a big portion of if you like somebody. The cons, I would say, or con, because there's only one, I guess, um, would be that it's not widely used. Uh, not many people are on it, but probably it means that um, people, yep, yeah, awareness and also perhaps people aren't using, or perhaps people aren't looking for a serious relationship. Because Tinder is just so convenient and just the swipe left and swipe right, it's almost a game. And people just download it for fun. Hinge is more, Hinge is more like you gotta put in a little more effort, there's just more commitment to it. It, it, yeah, not a bad thing if that's something you're looking for. I want to talk about her and for you women loving women who are out there and you've never heard of this app, this is finally an app that's targeted towards women. We have Grindr, okay, for guys. But like where, like <laughs> there's been talk about where is the app for lesbians? Where is it? So with, with her, there actually is a swipe left and swipe right component. So you could, you could just swipe right on everybody <laughs> or you could just swipe left on everybody. <laughs> oh, what's interesting is that this app tells you who likes you compared to like Tinder. Um, you actually have to like, you actually have to pay for the Tinder premium or whatever they call it, Tinder gold to see who actually liked you. Um, so I get notifications on, Oh wait, actually Hinge does that too, sort of. 
So it actually gives you like a lineup of everybody. To, it actually tells you who likes you. Um, not a flex, not, I'm not trying to flex here. Like, yeah, it tells you if you're a lesbian, bisexual, or pansexual, which is great because you don't you don't get to see that on Tinder. It's just like, oh, you're a woman like on Tinder. We, I don't know who you are or what you are. Wait, I take that back. I think Tinder made an update for that where you actually could see. Never mind. Huge kudos to this app. It tells you your pronouns, okay? How inclusive is that? One of the cute things is that you can put um, these things called pride pins. And it has various stickers that you can pretty much use to identify yourself if you want to put a label to what kind of queer woman you are. One thing I do want to mention about the app Her and they would do these online events targeted to meet um, certain demographics of the queer community. So like they have, I have here, um, there's a video speed dating event. There was an uh, online um, like Zoom <laughs> meeting. Um, it was a Zoom live talk or whatever about uh, safe sex. Cause sex that is so important. So I absolutely love the inclusiveness and the community that they're building because when you're a new gay bee, like a new, just a new gay who's out of the closet and don't know anybody who's gay, or maybe you do know some people that are gay, or maybe they just aren't a lesbian or a queer woman, maybe you have a lot of guy, you know, gay guy friends, you don't feel that sense of support because they just don't understand your struggle. Um, but even if you do have queer or women friends, it's nice to have another source to consult to help you feel comfortable. There's nothing wrong with, you know, having more help or having more, you know, resources to give you that help. And that's what I really appreciate about this app and the amount of work that they're doing to build this community. Okay, so what does this all mean? How does this information help me as a viewer? What should I do with it? Well, from my personal review of all these apps, I can tell you from my past eight years of experience that each one of these plays a certain part, except for Bumble. <laughs> I've used that app and it's just like, I've had no success. I hate this whole like 24 hour time limit because like I work, I'm busy when I'm at work. I do not check my phone, okay? So I'm sure these other girls that don't respond back to me probably feel the same way or they're just not interested. <laughs> my personal recommendation is to use, stick, use one, one app and see how that goes. And I would say, branching out to other apps that you feel comfortable using or feel beneficial in using um, if you're looking for date in that it gives you again like a higher chance or higher probability of getting a match. I personally have found Tinder and Hinge to be the most um, helpful to me um, in that Tinder has a large dating pool so I'm able to get more matches and then hinge because I am personally looking for a more committed relationship. Those are my recommendations. Let me know what you think down in the comments or what you guys have experienced in your dating and your app dating use. Let me know.